Hunterings, how is it done? There is different content on this episode than the intro to Ingate that is specific to hunters. If you have not listened to the intro into this series, you'd understand this one more, if you do. Welcome to the barn. I'm Jason Curtis, and I am our show announcer. Typically speaking, the hunter rings are more difficult than the jumper rings, so if this is your first show, you will most likely start off in the jumpers, but let's not count on that. How do you know who is supposed to be in each class? Class sheets will be provided to you. These may vary from show secretary to show secretary, but hopefully they all provide the needed basic information. An entry number, rider name, trainer name. Some of the class sheets include more information, but that's more for the announcer than you, but sometimes you might need to announce a class too. That will be another podcast. Typically, you'll have a sheet per class, trip and round. So let's say there are six people in the class, any class. When that person enters the ring, you put a distinguishable mark near the number or name. You'll develop your own system, but commonly in the hunters, it's a slash, one way or the other, near the entry number. That way, when they come back for the second trip, the slash goes the other direction. When both trips are done, you'd then have an X near the entry number. I use this method, and if they are doing a warm-up trip, I put a check mark above the number. Some end gates use stars or just squiggles. Sometimes a competitor will only do a single trip. When they are just doing one trip, I will put a DNS to let me know they did not start the other trip. If an entry is a scratch, I put an SC in the box where the number is. Either way, consistency and the ability for someone to take over for you and understand quickly your system is best. Part of the horse lingo you'll need to learn quickly is hunter trip, egg trip, fly class, under saddle. A quick explanation of what is a hunter round or trip. What is an equitation trip or round? What is the difference between an under saddle class, a hack class, and a flat class? A trip or round are the same thing. It's over fences. Flat or hunter under saddle classes. The horse is judged on the flat, meaning we are not jumping fences. In show hunter classes, the horse's movement and manners are judged, with quality of movement paramount. In equitation classes, the rider's position, seat, and aids are judged, not the horse itself specifically, if they are jumping or in a flat class. A typical hunter equitation division has two trips or rounds. First trip and second trip. Often there will be a warm-up trip as well. That is very similar to one of the other trips, usually the second, but not always. Sometimes there are classic trips involved in this division too. Sometimes there are two divisions going on at the same height at the same time. Sometimes you might have a hunter division and an equitation division open at the same time. Sometimes one of the hunter trips could be counted towards a classic trip and a third trip that is just for those competing in the classic. Okay, so what does all that even mean? Confusing, right? Well, imagine you are not a good communicator and you are doing all this via radio. So here is the trick to making the six or more potential cards clear for you, the end gate. Think of everything from the perspective of the judge. If you were the judge on the other end of the radio, would you be able to understand what you were telling them as to what card they are judging? Here's a scenario. Let's imagine you have a child hunter division with nine horses and rider combinations, an adult hunter division with six horses and rider combinations, a combined child adult classic with seven entries, the second trip of their division is the first trip of the classic, and they have a classic trip if they are entered. You also have a warm-up. How many scorecards does the judge have to be holding in their hand? Seven. Now, you should also know that the judge has a card for each individual class. The judge has to stop them from blowing away, getting wet, dropping them, marking the cards accordingly, and maybe asking you a question on the radio. And, oh yeah, judging the horse. Do you see why you must communicate clearly? Insider trick here. You'll be looking for 15 horses total. Not all horses can be in the warm-up ring, let alone the show ring at the same time, unless it's a flat class. So what do we do? Rotations. Here's an introductory to the theory of rotations. Typically speaking, you'll want three horses in each rotation. Warm-up, first trip, second trip, classic. That is potentially four trips per horse. Three horses are very easy to handle in this situation. Figure two minutes per trip, three horses, 
four trips to 24 minutes per rotation. Now, if there are some that are not doing the classic, maybe even some who don't want to do the warm-up, so you'll adjust accordingly. But you can give an estimated time here if someone asks. Let's imagine three rotations. Here is where communication comes in. You as the end gate have to ask the trainer or the rider what trip they are doing before the rider walks into the ring. Why? If a judge has seven or more cards, which admittedly more than seven would be very rare, but let's imagine, how are they to know what trip that horse is doing? In my opinion, here's the best way for an end gate to let the judge know what they are scoring based on the scenario above. Hold up the rider. The judge needs to know what card, what entry number. Do not let them just go into the ring. So the first horse in the ring will be a warm-up trip, number 456. Second horse, warm-up, number 123. Adult card, first trip, number 456. Child card, first trip, number 123. Warm-up trip, number 789. Adult second trip, first classic, number 456. Child hunter's first trip, number 789. Child second trip, no classic, number 123. Classic trip, number 456. Child second trip, first classic, number 789. And on it goes in your rotation. So basically what you're telling the judge is, what card do they need to grab first? Then the back number of the rider. Every rider must have a unique number. If they do not have a number, they cannot go into the ring. Here's what some people will do if they have grabbed the wrong number. They might turn the numbers upside down or reverse the number to where no numbers are showing. If this happens, make sure you tell the judge to please score this as so-and-so. A little help from my friends. From time to time, a judge will not be able to see all or part of a fence. Sometimes they will be able to see a back rail and not the front, or vice versa. They will ask you and the announcer to keep an eye on one or even more fences. So you would radio to the judge if you happen to see a jump come down. If you happen to see a fence come down that the judge has not asked you to be looking out for and the judge gives a higher score, don't be afraid to let them know what fence fell. If you are fast enough and the judge agrees, then the announcer can also announce a correct score too. This is not to say you should dispute what the judge has said, or rather, you are bringing it to their attention. Earlier in this podcast, I talked to you about announcing or calling the flat class and under saddle classes. Some shows do this differently. Depending if the class is rated or not, you might have two classes over fences one day and two over fences the next, seen by a different judge. Make sure you are aware of what day the under saddle class or flat classes will go. If the class is one in which the horse will walk, trot, and canter, you can estimate 10 to 15 minutes of time per class. If the class is just a walk, trot class, it'll be more likely around 5 to 7 minutes. A walk class will be less than 7 minutes. Now, all of this also depends on numbers of entries and your ability to herd cats. You need to have kept everyone in the loop to your rotations as to when the undersaddle classes, the flat classes, and jogs are going to take place. Okay, so here's something else that is bound to happen. I say this happens no less than five times a day in every hunter ring at a busy show. Trainers, this is where it helps to be nice to your end gates. You as the end gate ask the rider what trip they're going to do and if they are a child or adult. I promise you someone is going to say first trip. You radio to the judge, child card number 789 first trip. They go into the ring and do the warm up. The judge is going to then do one of two things. They are going to radio you and ask if they are in fact doing a warm-up trip. If they are a nice judge, you don't know. It's not your job to know, but make sure the trainer is in shouting distance or near you so you can ask. If the judge decides to, they can eliminate the rider for being off course. The judge that eliminates a rider will get on the radio and simply say off course. That's when the announcer will say number 789's number and or name for clarity to please be excused, you are off course. Safety note here. If a rider has two stops, they are eliminated. The judge again will simply say number so-and-so is excused. The announcer will excuse the rider. If the rider continues to jump the course, you need to use the PA system or otherwise yell to the rider. They need to leave the ring or shout and tell the trainer they need to ask their rider to stop. 
This is a safety issue, and the judge has expressly asked the rider to stop jumping. While we are in safety mode for a minute, it is against the rules for any horse to enter or leave any competition ring at other gate than a walk. Horses must walk into a ring and must walk out of all rings, including the jumper ring. As the hunter and gate person, you may find yourself being somewhat of an announcer. Some shows you may be called upon to announce or call the flat classes and under saddle classes. This might be on the same public address system that goes to the warm-up area for the ring you are in gating, and you need to know how to use it. There are a number of variations on the theme of a PA system, from the big bullhorn type to a wireless microphone system. Whatever the case, there will always be at least an on-off switch for the system. There might be an on-off for the microphone, and there will be at least one volume control somewhere. If you need batteries for the mic or any part of the system, make sure you have enough for that day and maybe the next two so you're not looking for them if they go dead. Know how to use a system before you are just pitched into a situation. But once you know how to use one system, they are basically the same. You know, it doesn't matter if you don't know who all the trainers and riders are yet. Sure, it helps, but if you are stepping up to the new show for the first time, you have a voice, a radio, and you have class sheets, hopefully. Deal with the most immediate issues first, whatever that is. You can organize your booth if no one is around yet. In the morning, when you picked up all your paperwork, radios, ribbons, horse treats, dry erase boards, whatever, make sure you pick up a class count sheet. This sheet tells you what classes are on the schedule and how many entries are expected in each class and what every ring is expected to be doing on the showground. This is a fluid document, but it is very important to planning your day and can give you an idea of what is happening in other rings if you are asked by a competitor or trainer. In the previous episode, we talked about show math. Well, show math applies more in the hunter rings than the jumper ring and is very important to your day. You should be able to estimate when you will be on a particular class later on in the day by looking at your class count sheets, but you must first coordinate with the course designer while referencing your class counts. Why are you talking with a course designer? Time management. Sometimes there is a want or need to have a course change. After all, we need to keep the courses interesting, right? Some course changes are very easy and some are very elaborate. In the morning, if you take a few minutes and talk to the course designer and main jump group person for your ring and discuss classes with multiple heights in the same division as a team working together, you can estimate the amount of time each height adjustment and course change will take. We should also talk to the course designer about when we will need to open the ring for course walks, too, as they will need to be factored into your scheduling. Course walks. Course walks are something of a touchy subject. Oftentimes, the course designer will tell you when the course is open to walk. Obviously, this will not be done while the water and drag are happening. Not everyone can walk when the course is made available for one reason or another. There is a likelihood that a trainer or rider is competing in another ring, so what do we do as the in-gate person? We try to be as accommodating as possible. Obviously, you can't just stop the ring for a latecomer. But if there is a short gap in the class, they can walk provided they know that they will be asked to exit the ring the moment the next horse is ready to come into the ring. And don't forget about ring maintenance. This is often referred to as a water drag. When you have reviewed all the information, you will have a much better idea of how the day will go. Then you slot in your numbers per class, and you can estimate what time each class will happen. Now, sometimes different rings need to have a water and drag at the same time, so this will also become a factor, not always in your control. The show coordinator will be the person both in gates need to speak with to determine which ring has priority for maintenance. Now, something we haven't discussed yet that might put a wrench into some of our planning. Ads and scratches. Ads and scratches are usually done on the same paper form, so you'll need to take a good look at them. What they should contain is a class number, a back number, a rider name, and horse's name. If they don't include at least the class number, rider's name, and horse's name when they are handed to you, don't let that person walk away. The number you can get when they show up at the end gate. Sometimes they don't have the back numbers. The announcer will hardly get any ads or scratch sheets. Typically, we don't care about scratches. Ads are much more important because we need to have the information to announce them. Otherwise, it's just going to be a mystery to us, right? Pro tip here, keep your ad and scratch sheets. If someone says, I didn't scratch, well, you've got the sheet. If they want to re-enter, then they need to go to the show office. If they added and you are looking for them, they might say, I didn't add. 
Well, here's a class sheet that says you did. If the office asks you for it back for any reason, you can get it back to them and any mistakes can be addressed. Trainers, writers, moms and dads, want to keep your Engate person happy? Be on time. Want to make them really happy? Be polite. Courtesy goes a long way. The one thing that no Engate person, judge, or anyone involved in running the show wants is an empty gate. If you and other writers or trainers add just 30 to 45 seconds to your ring by being late or unavailable, you have extended everyone's day that needs to be at that ring. The in-gate, the judge, jump crew, EMT, vet, steward, show coordinator, office staff, and the announcer. The best in-gate will be the ones that are organized and proactive. They will get cell phone numbers of trainers or head grooms of those that have large numbers in the classes. In today's world of text messaging and quick phone calls, communication is truly at your fingertips. Top in-gate staff should have already figured out how long their day should be based on each division entry numbers, trips, jogs, under saddles, presentations, waters and drags, and should be able to, at a glance, tell you how long till a specific division or class. Hey, when will the green pony start? If there was an unexpected delay, times will obviously change, but you get the idea. Typically, each hunter trip is two minutes from entry to exit. Water and drags take about 15 to 25 minutes depending on staff. Course changes, height adjustments that are done by experienced jump crews should take 5 to 15 minutes max. Something that happens at every horse show is, at some point, multiple in gates will be looking for the same trainer or rider, and in some instances, even the same horse. So all planning can and will be shut out the window when everything comes to a grinding halt. This is especially so at smaller shows. This is where in gates start working together to solve the log jam as best possible. A trainer that is supposed to be at multiple rings should contact an in-gate, and the in-gate should make a plan. Well, why not the trainer? The trainer only knows what their clients are doing, and not everyone else's. Sure, they'd like to be in charge, but look at it this way. If one ring has 24 trips and the other only has four, and those four are all the trainer in question, it makes most sense to send that trainer to the one with four, as the other trainers can keep the ring with 24 going. It will help immensely if the trainer does not just go where they think they need to go, and by the end gates working together to stop two or more rings from being on hold. It is important that the end gates talk to one another in this type of situation. Everyone at the show should know the jargon and the math of horse shows. The estimated time per trip is two minutes per round or trip. Some rings are larger, and you would estimate three. Ten horses in a division with two trips. Another way to put this is ten to see twice, ten to go twice, or twenty trips. You as the end gate and those around you will automatically know that this division will take forty minutes. Okay, so we've just covered the most obvious part of the end gate person's job. But there is so much more. Before I go any further, I want to let you in on another pro tip. If you hear a competitor, trainer, or parent complaining about anything that is relevant to your show, Call the show coordinator to your ring via radio or phone. Maybe even text them what is going on. Don't say this stuff over the radio. If it is a question about a rule or maybe the judge made a mistake, do not get involved. Call the show coordinator. Do not call the judge. Do not express your own opinion. Call the coordinator first and they will contact the steward if needed or they will instruct you to do so if they can't make it to you. Whatever you do, do not take this issue into your own hands. Now, for a difficult part of the in-gate job, let's say your judge says, I've already seen this horse in this class. What does one do now? In the hunter rings, the judge will continue to judge the trip. They might not know what card, but they are coming prepared for their job, just like you are yours. When the trip is over, you need to have a conversation with the judge, not on the radio. Even with the best communication skills in the world, sometimes mistakes will happen. Maybe it was your mistake. Hey, we're all human. Maybe it was a judge's mistake. Maybe the rider was really confused. But they shouldn't have been in the ring if you didn't know what trip they were doing. Be ready to answer any questions a judge might toss at you, but be accurate and don't guess. You'll probably need someone to stop others from coming into the ring while you have stepped away. Be friendly with the jump crew. This is where they can help you. Hopefully you have been able to work things out with the judge and all is fine. Draw an order or your list of rotations. 
For all classes, it is your responsibility as in-gate for a class with a drawn order to tell writers how far out they are. Example, uh, at the gate, in one, in two, in ten. It's a countdown. If anyone adds in a drawn order, they must go to the top of the order. If they add multiple rides, contact the show office to see the personal sequence and where, in the order, multiple horses are to go. No one is allowed to go out of their own personal sequence when multiple rides are involved. Now, here is an exception only in the Hunter Rings. Some two-round classes require a score, and the rider will return low score to high, but there will be a cutoff score. Usually, the top 12 will return. Now, let's say the class is offered at different heights. A class might run lower height fences to higher, then will return higher fences to lower. But in each section of height of fences, the horses will return low score to high score. Then, when all the math is done, the judges will determine the winners. An example, let's say there are 20 in this class. Five are showing at 3 foot, five are showing at 3 foot 3, five are showing at 3 6, and five are showing at 4 foot. The 3 foot section would show their first trip putting up scores. Jump crew would then adjust heights and widths. The 3 foot 3 section would then show. Something to know is this. If the hunter class requires scores, you will have to work it out with the announcer who will be giving the scores. Both people should not be giving out the scores to prevent confusion. I have found that 3x5 cards are a great way to keep track of classes that are giving you more than one score per division. A great example is a hunter derby. I make a card for each entry. I'll put the back number, rider, and horse's name on the top line. If there are multiple heights being jumped in the division, I put that number in the top right corner of the card. The first score goes right beneath the names. If you notice that two horses have the same score, let the judges know. This is important. They may have to change the score. Those that have the top 12 scores will move to the second round. I put the second round score below the first, and then I sum the scores and put that number near the bottom and circle it. You should also know the format for scoring the class. Is it a hunter trip and a handy round? Is there going to be more than just a final score for the handy round? Example. Some classes, the judges will give you more than one score. Base score of 80 plus four high options and five for handy. You will need to discuss this with a judge so you know how they will be giving the scores and adjust accordingly. If you have noticed you are coming to the end of your entries and you have not seen number so-and-so, what do you do? First, you contact the other in-gates to see if they have the trainer. If not, you start making barn calls to the trainer or rider. Still no joy, you contact the office to see if they've scratched or failed to pick up their numbers, which means they're not even there and you can move on. If they have picked up their numbers, then you contact the show coordinator to see if they can physically locate the competitor. You'll need the trainer's name, the back number, the horse and rider's info handy. If they can't find the trainer, the person, the horse, listen to the instructions of the coordinator. You should ask if you can put three minutes on the gate. If it comes to that, you need to let people at the end gate know you have put three minutes on the gate. At one and a half minutes, you need to let them know one and a half minutes on the gate, and then 30 seconds, and then announce the class is closed. You'll then move on. If the missing competitor does show up, and the jump crew is already setting for the next division, the show has done everything possible to find them. You, unfortunately, will get the brunt force of whoever it is. Call the coordinator. That is their job. Let them handle it. Results. Depending on class size, there may come a time when you will be given out more than one ribbon per placing. It depends on how the class is split. This is a management decision. One such type of split is called a California split. First place, number 1, 2, 3. And number 3, 2, 1. Second place, number 4, 5, 6. And number 6, 5, 4. Third place, number 7, 8, 9. And number 9, 8, 7. And on and on and on. If there is more than two splits, you will have more firsts, seconds, and thirds till all appropriate ribbons are awarded. You will always want to make sure you have lots of scrap paper. I usually use a spiral-bound notebook if I am working in Engate. Sometimes an exhibitor will ask you where they placed yesterday. As an announcer, I keep all my results in an Excel spreadsheet so I can track down champion reserves from week to week and also for circuit. Hunter splits are done one of two ways. 
a California split, as already explained, or the judge might give you the results in sections. First trip, section A, 1 through 12. Second, section, section B, 1 through 12. Second trip, section A, 1 through 12. Section B, 1 through 12. Some judges might also call it section 1 and section A, or a variation on the same theme. The idea is they don't want to say one section was better than the other. Sometimes giving out ribbons is part of your job. If this is the case, you'll want to make sure you are properly tired. Also, you'll want to keep a list of who you gave what ribbons to on the class sheets. I can almost guarantee at some point more than one person will ask you for the same ribbon. Something that happens at every show at some point is multiple in-gates will be looking for the same trainer or rider, and in some instances even the same horse. So all planning can and will be shot out the window, and everything comes to a grinding halt. This is especially so at smaller shows. This is where the in-gates start working together to solve the log jam as best possible. A trainer that is supposed to be at multiple rings should contact an in-gate, and the in-gates should make a plan, not the trainer. Why not the trainer? The trainer only knows what their clients are doing and not everyone else's. Sure, they'd like to be in charge, but let's look at it this way. If one ring has 24 chips and another only has four, and those four are all the trainer in question, it makes most sense to send that trainer to the one with four, as other trainers can keep their ring with 24 going. It will immensely help if the trainer doesn't just go to where they think they need to go by the end gates working together to stop two or more rings from being on hold. It is important that each end gate talk to one another in this type of situation. My thoughts on the end gate having to leave for any reason other than the day is over. If you are going to step away from the end gate, you should contact the show coordinator to find someone to cover for you. If the judge can't leave until there is a break, neither can you. If you walk away, take your radio with you. Do not leave the end gate unless there is a major pause. Let the judge and announcer know you are walking away. Attached to this podcast are what we call show notes. You can reference these show notes for some of the examples I have given you. You can also find this information and much more at my website, www.seeyouatx.com. If you have any questions about being a hunter in gate person, I am happy to talk to you. My name is Jason Curtis and I am Horse Show Announcer. Disclaimer This podcast series is not intended to replace the instructions, wants, wishes, or style of running a horse show. It is not intended to supersede any show manager, coordinator, or board of directors managing the show. I have had the privilege of working with and for some of the top show managers in the United States. This podcast is comprised of knowledge gained at working with the country's best. It is very likely that your show management team is going to have some different ideas on how things are done. That's how it should be, and that's how you should do them, the way they want you to. This podcast isn't intended to be the book on how it's all done. The fact of the matter is... With all the rule changes and management styles, that is an impossible task. My sole purpose in this podcast series is to give you an idea of what one can expect to happen if you are new to the Ingate job. These are my opinions based on years of experience and what does and does not work. It's a heads up of what you might see and to prepare you just a little bit of what in my opinion you should know and or expect when you begin this fantastic trip into the wonderful world of horse shows. Believe it or not, no one person can know it all, and no one person can expect to be perfect all the time. So in this endeavor, I've done the best I can for today. I've always liked this following quote by Donald Miller. When you stop expecting people to be perfect, you can like them for who they are.